live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. An elderly woman and her son are caught in the crossfire of a dangerous dispute they had nothing to do with. Tonight, they say the gun violence in their west side neighborhood is simply out of control. The woman and her son just going about their business inside their home when shots rang out. Uh, what he did may have saved her life. Sean Lay got a chance to speak with both of these Detroiters. Uh, Sean, they just want their neighborhood to be safe like so many others. So many others. Karen, Devin, you hit the point on the head here because we're hearing and we're responding to a lot of these situations with gunfire outside, innocent people being caught in the crossfire here. We're talking about an 81-year-old woman. She's suffering from cancer. Her 61-year-old son inside the house caring for her. But on Saturday night, he had to use his body as a shield to protect his own mother as gunshots outside came flying in. I reached for the remote control and pow, 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 And I'm like, wait a minute, something ain't right. Anthony McMillan is 61. He spent the weekend in the hospital after being shot four times, one bullet going right through his arm. It happened Saturday night. He was simply at home, inside his home, helping his 81-year-old mother get to bed. But a gun battle outside on Myers near Joy sent shots right through the front window of his home. So he got hit there, and then they still shooting. And about that time, she had stand up. And when I pushed her on the floor, it's when I got grazed right here. And right in the line of fire, McMillan's mother. As soon as we got ready to go to bed, that's when hell broke a loose. Son pushing mother to the floor and covering her body with his. He say, my life, God knows he did. And I got proof. This family is speaking out, saying the gunfire on their street has hit a boiling point, and they are pleading for more help from Detroit police. Anthony's mother has cancer. He takes care of her inside their home. He says he needs help with the danger outside. I'm going through enough. I'm really going through too much. And see, I don't need this extra going on out here. Back here live, you heard Anthony say it. He's going through enough, trying to take care of his mother. He doesn't need shots fired right outside, coming into his home, almost killing him, almost hitting his dear 81-year-old mother. We took his concerns, his mother's concerns, right to Detroit police today. They said, yes, they're investigating those shots fired. They want to get to the bottom of it, likely gang activity near the end of the block there, perhaps. At the same time, they're also going to be patrolling there more, but also want to make this point that if you're having a similar situation where you live, call your precinct, ask for stepped-up patrol trolls in the area. DPD says they'll be happy to do it. We're live tonight. Sean Lake, Local 4, back to you. Important to know. All right, Sean. A poignant and emotional farewell to the only monarch most in the UK have ever known. Queen Elizabeth II laid to rest today at Windsor Castle. Our Kimberly Gill among the hundreds of thousands of people in and around London for a historic moment. Let's get back to her live in London. KG. Karen and Devin, good evening. The world said goodbye to a queen as millions more stood on the streets watching the ceremony live. It was a ceremony steeped in tradition and remembered for her life of service. Let's take a look at some video from earlier from the ceremony today. Her top, the top of her coffin draped in a flag and a personal handwritten note from King Charles reading, quote, in loving and devoted memory. Thousands lined the streets as Her Majesty's coffin journeyed through the heart of London to her final resting place at Windsor Castle, many pausing for a moment to share with us their emotion. Listen. That was the lump in the throat yeah, moment I think. when the coffin came by and, and so slowly yes. and the family behind. We won't see her anymore, but this was the last thing, the last time. I signed allegiance to Her Majesty in, in 1971 as a soldier, uh, so it was saying goodbye to a wonderful, brilliant woman who will never be repeated. Two days before she died, she was interviewing prime ministers. I mean, if that's not service to the end, I don't know what is. Yeah. Now, Local 4 photojournalist Tim Pamplin spoke with a gentleman from Chesterfield, and he has that story right now. Well, Kimberly, it was certainly an experience along the mall this afternoon as hundreds of thousands of well-wishers line the streets of central London. Amongst them, brother and sister from back home in Michigan. I got chills and it, everything like slowed down, like everything you just felt your senses come alive. And for me, the moment was when I saw Charles, King Charles, and then Prince William and Prince Harry. And they, Prince William and 
Harry were my age, you know, so that for me was like the big moment. They claimed their spot last evening, camping out in St. James's Park. Their efforts paid off when the procession began, and this wasn't Danny's first time paying respects to the Queen. Correct, yeah, so that was the second time um, since I did see it the first time when she was laying in state, um, which we stood in line for 14 hours. Last night we camped out at 8 and we were there all the way until 1 p.m. today. I think Maureen summed it up perfectly with this. Thank you, like you served your entire life to us. Please go rest with your prince in his arms and thank you, thank you for doing everything and serving us. That's right, and so many people sharing that same sentiment as to why it was so important for them to be here today. That's going to do it for us here in London. Devin, Karen, we'll send it back to you in Detroit. Kimberly Gill, Local 4. Kim, we always joke about how you run into Detroiters anywhere you yeah. go in the world and Michiganders, and that's been the case for you and Tim there, right? It really is incredible what, Tim, we met people from Warren, from Birmingham, from Rochester Hills. It's just amazing. And sometimes just in the crowd, you know, what really sticks out, Devin, is the Old English D. A couple of times I've right. seen people wearing that hat. <laughs> and I, I go up and I'm like, are you from Detroit, from Michigan? And sure enough, it's just really been an incredible, incredible experience. It's nice. a beacon. And Great. the reporting has been fabulous from both you and Tim. Most yeah. definitely. Thank you. We do appreciate all of your hard yep. work, Kim. Thank you. All right, a uh, new study tonight showing a lot of young people in the UK are questioning whether the monarchy should continue. But a great deal of youth was present in those long lines to yeah. view the Queen's casket. NBC's Lester Holt spoke with two young men for whom the monarchy represents both history and hope. Is a monarchy, in your view, part of the identity of, of, of this country and its people? Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, we've, we've had a monarchy as, as long as history, you know? And it's, it's something that everyone, you know, you think of Great Britain and people sort of go, oh yeah, the queen, or now obviously the king, or, or just the monarchy in general. It's something that people love to feel a part of. Lester, here's what these young men think about King Charles in a special edition of Nightly News, live from London, ahead at 6.30. I kept wondering that, looking at the young faces in the crowd. Was that about Queen Elizabeth or was it about the monarchy right. in it's general? Just... Well, I guess time will tell us that. Look at that beautiful day outside Look at right it. Now. Bright blue sky. Yep. The sun was out. There was a light breeze. It was a nice farewell to summer as we count down to Thursday, Kim. <laughs> I know that almost doesn't look real, right? It looks like a picture or a painting because the sky is just crystal clear blue. It's gorgeous outside. These are the days that are so few and far between as we get into the fall months. So we are going to definitely enjoy it tonight. 82 degrees at City Airport, 81 at Metro, 75. Just dropped down to 75 in Pontiac. Dew points are dropping. It will be a, a nice cool night for us here in Metro Detroit. We've got mostly clear skies. The evening planner hour by hour looks to be quite nice and pleasant. Will be 66 degrees by midnight tonight. But we do have some severe weather to talk about on Wednesday. That's when our temps will go from 84 down to about 63 degrees in a very quick period of time. So we do expect possibly some thunderstorms and I will talk more about that coming up in the forecast. Well, it's one of the first things taught in driver's training. You see flashing lights on a school bus. You stop your vehicle until those lights are turned off. But lots of drivers are ignoring that and then putting students in danger. Our Kim DiGiulio takes us to Huron Township tonight, where police are giving extra attention to those who blow past the buses. At the start of every school year, Huron Township police see a big problem with drivers speeding past school buses when they have their stoplights on. However, this year seems to be worse than it's ever been before, and now police are cracking down. If anybody deserves a break, it's the kids getting on and off the bus trying to go to school. Our bus is just now arriving. Officer Mark Grant has made it his mission to help keep the students of Huron School District safe as he's seen too many people blow past school buses as students head to school. They should know kids could be coming from any direction when those red lights turn on and they don't necessarily wait for the bus driver or their parent to say go ahead. Here on Township is a rural area, so it's dark in the morning and the speed limits are high on these roads. In some areas as high as 55 miles an hour, in many of the areas 45. 
uh, but some of the drivers we're estimating are passing at even higher than 45 miles per hour as our students are attempting to cross the street. Chief Everett Robbins says it's not a new problem, but it's never been this bad before. We are averaging at least two a day. Um, some days are up as high as four, but it's every single day. We've not had a day since the beginning of the school year where we've had zero. One. Got it. What happened with the bus? Even this morning, we rode along with Officer Grant, and sure enough, we saw it happen. She said when the lights turned red, she was afraid to stop because of the wet pavement. I told her that she had plenty of time to stop. The lights were red long before she got to the bus. Officer Grant has three options of tickets to issue for this violation. It's a $195 ticket with three points. There's a school bus, which is three points. Um, and a fine. There's careless driving, which is three points and a fine. And then if it's really egregious, we can go as far as reckless driving. So that's a misdemeanor, a 93 day misdemeanor. These drivers are putting the children from five different schools in the Huron School District in danger. And the interesting part is the people violating the traffic laws don't live in the area. 100% of the tickets that we've given this school year, which has happened every single day this school year, are residents that don't live within our township and they're driving through for a short time and they're putting our kids in a lot of danger. In here on Township, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Now, police say buses usually keep their uh, flashing lights on for a total of 11 seconds, so ignoring that signal isn't really saving drivers that much time anyway. Yeah. An alleged drunk driver arrested after state police say he hit a patrol car in Washtenaw County. Happened in the westbound lanes of I-94 near Zeeb Road. Troopers were investigating what they believed was a drunk driving incident when the driver crashed into the patrol car. Troopers suffered minor injuries. The 33-year-old man from Canton was arrested and charges are now pending. The Oakland County prosecutor hopes a new brain trust can help prevent the next mass shooting. Karen McDonald announcing today the formation of the Oakland County Gun Violence Commission, which she says will take a data driven approach to combating gun violence. The commission will bring together community members and national experts to develop a curriculum with a focus on prevention. The prosecutor says the Oxford and Uvalde tragedies spurred her to act. After every shooting, we all ask, what can we do about it? When Oxford happened, we were all shocked and grief stricken, and we were rightfully focused on the tragedy right in front of us and the prosecution. When Uvalde happened, all of us could see the tragedy unfold, but we couldn't do anything about it. And that's when I decided to form this commission so that we can learn from all of the past shootings and try to prevent another Oxford or another Uvalde. McDonald said access to guns is really one of the biggest issues, but the problem needs to be attacked from several different angles.